subject again, um, what are the moral and ethical dimensions of climate change? I, Vice President Gore in his movie, I, I would assume most of you saw the movie, um, says three times that climate change is a moral issue. And he makes sort of, it's an emphasis, but he doesn't explain what, what, if, what does it mean to say that climate change is a moral and ethical issue? What is entailed by that? Um, uh, I'm here to convince you that there is a lot more to uh, the assertion that climate change is a moral and ethical issue and how important it is, how desperately important it is that we encourage others to have this conversation about the moral and ethical dimensions of climate change. One of the reasons why this is so urgent, not only is the steepness of the cuts that we need so urgent, but a lot of the moral and ethical issues are actually hidden in scientific and economic arguments about climate change. Um, and we need to get, we need to educate others about what the moral and ethical issues are. It's not just one moral and ethical issue, it's many different moral and ethical issues. Uh, I work at Penn State, uh, we've created a, a program called the Collaborative Program on the Ethical Dimensions of Climate Change. We're working with 17 ethics institutes around the world uh, on this. And if this, if this weren't such a very, very, very scary problem, it would actually also be an exciting problem because it's gonna force us to think through multilateral institutions, how we uh, uh, make international law. It's go going to bring every, climate change in my view is going to uh, force us to rethink uh, moral norms, uh, soft law norms, international norms. Let me dig into what I, we believe the moral and ethical dimensions of climate change are. Uh, there are many of them. Uh, we've identified eight major issues and what we're trying to do and what we encourage others to do is not talk about morality or ethics in the abstract, but to pay really a close attention to the international debate about climate change. We are, we are, we are following the debate, teasing out the moral and ethical issues, and then doing rigorous ethical critique of, of those issues. There's a paper called the White Paper on the Ethical Dimensions of Climate Change. That looks like I didn't bring enough on this. Uh, this is a first start. You will see it's a fairly rigorous attempt to dig deeply into the moral and ethical dimensions of climate change. Let me just quickly identify what we think the most pressing ethical and moral issues of our time about climate change at this moment in history. These are gonna change as this debate unfolds and we attempt to try to follow them. The first issue is how much warming should we tolerate? Uh, another way of stating this issue is what is the atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases that the world should, should identify as a, as a target? There is no more obvious moral and ethical issue than this issue. It will literally determine who lives and who dies, uh, whether Tuvalu survives, whether the Marshall Islands survive. The issue of atmospheric target, we must see it not as simply as a scientific issue, but as the most profound kind of moral and ethical issue. Issue number one. Issue number two, the world is emitting seven billion tons of carbon. Uh, we're headed to 20 billion tons of carbon in this century under one of the IPCC scenarios. We've got to reduce the seven to three to two and a half billion tons in the next 30 years. The moral issue is how do we allocate who gets to use the, the, those, those, those two and a half billion tons of carbon? How do we allocate? Uh, does the United States get to use more per capita than China or India? There could be no more obvious ethical and moral issue than who gets a right to use the atmosphere as a sink, and it's hardly on our lips. Issue three, who's gonna pay for damages uh, of, from climate change? Uh, this, is the, this is the issue that the developing countries are now starting to bring to the negotiations, and it, it is also a moral and ethical issue. Uh, uh, morals and ethics would have the polluter pays principles. There's a whole uh, area of philosophy called retributive justice that has a lot to say about this. This is a justice issue. Uh, issue now, there are the obvious ethical questions that climate change raises. There's a whole host of probably more important moral and ethical issues, but they're hidden in scientific and economic arguments about what we should do. The next issue is, how about scientific uncertainty? What, what are the ethical and moral dimensions of scientific uncertainty? Why is no one uh, articulating the scientific uncertainty issue as a moral issue? Uh, clearly, if all across the world, if you do dangerous behavior, it is criminal 
uh, to do very dangerous behavior. Uh, and you can't use as a defense that you didn't know for sure it was going to happen. Uh, it is criminal to do very dangerous behavior uh, once you have enough evidence. Once science says that there's a, r a rational risk, it is a moral issue. In this case, there are certain aspects of climate change which makes the excuse that the United States and a couple of other countries for 20 years on, on scientific uncertainty morally and ethically bankrupt. Uh, what, what, are, what are aspects of the scientific uncertainty? Well, if you wait until all the uncertainty is resolved, it's too late. The damage has already been caused. Uh, those that want to hide behind scientific uncertainty haven't asked the victims of climate change whether they, what bet they want to take. There are questions of procedural justice. There are enormous questions of, of justice involved in the attempt to use scientific uncertainty as an excuse. But no one is calling those that want to rely upon uncertainty uh, as an excuse and, and identifying that as a moral and ethical question. Issue number five, cost. For 20 years, the United States, uh, I used to represent the Clinton administration here at the CSD. I'm a former negotiator. And for 20 years, we used the excuse, uh, we don't have to do anything because the cost to our economy alone uh, is prohibitive. Think about that. One country is saying the cost to its economy alone, where the harms are uh, somewhere else. There, there are various variations of the, of the cost argument that we need to see in moral and ethical terms. One form it is cost-benefit analysis. Uh, there's a whole series of dueling cost-benefit analysis about Kyoto and post-Kyoto regimes. Those cost-benefit analysis raise the most profound kind of ethical questions, and no one is calling the proponents of those cost-benefit cost analysis about the ethical issues. The issues such as the harms and benefits are disaggregated. The fact that the cost-benefit uh, disenfranchised future generations through discounting. The fact that uh, cost-benefit analysis make everybody, everything in the world, a commodity. The fact that a cost-benefit analysis uh, makes uh, people in poor countries' lives less valuable than, 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 than people's lives in, in, uh, in rich countries. I, and I could go on. The fact that people use cost-benefit analysis on this problem and people don't identify the obvious moral and ethical questions is very strange, is very, very strange. What, what are the other issues? Well, the issue of no country has to do anything until everyone else does something, okay? That's a third excuse unfortunately, that my country has been using for 20 years. We don't have to do anything until everyone else does something. That's a moral issue. Can a, a, a co-criminal decide that they, they don't have to stop their crime uh, because the other co-criminals haven't stopped doing it? As a matter of moral and ethics, we believe that th that, that excuse is also morally bankrupt. What about the issue of, well, we don't have to do anything until there are new, less costly technologies which can be invented uh, that will get us out of this mess. What does ethics have to say about that issue? Uh, what about the trading regimes? Are there ethical problems in the trading regimes? And there, in fact, could be. It all depends upon what form the trading regimes take. The long and short of it, in the white paper, what we're trying to do is to get philosophers and, and uh, theo th uh, 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 religious people to look at these issues rigorously and begin and deepen the ethical critique uh, of these issues. Now, if the world took climate change as a moral issue, it would radically, <laughs> radically change the way this is being negotiated. Um, it would, countries would have to immediately admit that they have to reduce their emissions to their fair share of safe global emissions. Um, uh, countries that have caused problems would have to admit that they have some responsibility to pay for damages and so forth. So the significance of seeing this as a moral and ethical issue is profound, I believe, okay? And that's why I want to thank the Baha'is in particular for organizing this conference. We all need to encourage people to see this in terms of moral and ethical issues, and not talk about it in the abstract, but in terms of the concrete justifications for doing something that people are not doing. Let me just conclude by the following. The following. Um, 
Bill McKibben, uh, who is a wonderful writer, about six years ago, he wrote an op-ed piece in the New York Times, and he said the following, I'm sitting here wondering why Americans don't see climate change as a moral and ethical issue. It makes me think of my parents, who were really good people, but did not get civil rights until they saw the dogs on the bridge on Selma, Alabama. He went on to say, and I believe, and I will end with, it's all of our duties, it's all of our duties to help people see the moral and ethical dimensions of climate change, uh, especially those of us that understand the problem. We have a particular duty, in my view, to get people to see the moral and ethical dimensions of this problem. The challenge is, what are the dogs on the bridge for this problem that we can help get other people to see? Thank you.